Hi guys, welcome back. Thank you very much for staying with us. I hope you're enjoying the show because we're having a lot of fun here. Um, we're still continuing with our trigonometry and we're doing 2D and 3D questions. We have a very interesting question that was sent to us by Dineo. If you also want to do the same, go to our WhatsApp or our Facebook and drop the question there. We'll be more than glad to help you to make sense of it. So let's just check what Dineo's question says. Hi Tenfold, my name is Dinao, I'm from Pretoria and I just want to know if you could please help me with this question. I'd like to send a shout out to all my friends and family. Wow, that is a very, very interesting question. Let's take a look at this question. But before we look at this question, it is very important for us to understand that when you are doing 2D and 3D questions, you are dealing with different dimensions. Now, most of the time, we are familiar with the horizontal surface or the horizontal plane. But if I take this piece of paper and I fold it into two halves like this, what is going to happen is I will have generated two planes and most of our triangles would either be lying on the horizontal plane or some of them will be lying on the vertical plane. However, we do also have some triangles that are going to be drawn such that they are along the incline. Now, whenever we talk to you about the angle of inclination, right, the angle of inclination or the angle of elevation, it is the angle that you're measuring from the bottom, from right there at the bottom, going straight up. It is always between the vertical line and any line that might be going up. So it is very important for you to keep that in mind because it's going to play a big role in the question that we're doing. Normally when I have to talk to you about that, I must tell you where is it starting and where is it going. So if this point here at the bottom was point A and the point at the top was point B, I would have to say the angle of elevation from point A to point B is whatever the number that I might give you. Alternatively, without saying A to B, I might B at point B and say the angle of elevation at point B from A is blah, blah, blah. That basically means that we're still talking about the same angle of elevation, which is at the bottom. And that angle is always an angle that goes up from the first point to the point at the top. Now, let's look at the next question and see how this is going to help us to figure out what is going on. The question reads as follows. A telephone cable is to be erected between two cliff sites AD and BE. Yesterday, Philippi said something very important about trying to imagine or try to think about what, um, just trying to think about what the drawing is actually talking about. Create a picture in your mind that will help you to make sense of whatever the story is about. So it is apparently a cliff here at AD. So let's look at where AD is. AD is a point here. And when we say it's a cliff, that simply means that if you think about it, it could be a cliff such that someone can be able to stand there. And there's another cliff site here, BE, which is right there on the right hand side. And again, if I just do this, it means someone can also be able to stand there. We need to be able to imagine this and think about it. It's going to make the question a bit more easier for you to approach it. So a telephone cable is to be erected between two cliff sites, AD and BE. Now, I don't know about you, but it, to me, it actually feels like this telephone line will basically be from this point going straight to that point there. So this is where we are actually expe expecting to have um, this cable. This is cable is definitely going to be here. Right, now, the question continues and says, an engineer stands at point C. Where is point C on our drawing? Well, point C is right there at the bottom. If I want, I can also add him. He is standing right there. This is where the engineer is currently standing, right? And according to this question, um, in the same horizontal plane as the foot of the cliff, he measures the angle of E from C and D to be alpha and theta. From C and D to be theta and alpha, respectively. Now, that part is a bit more um, uh, confusing. What you need to do is you have to try and take this sentence that you see here and put it in the diagram because it is not going to be able uh, it's not going to be possible for you to solve the question if you don't have the, the value of theta and alpha appearing on the sketch. So we want to put alpha and theta on the sketch. And according to this question, 
The important word here, this point, E from C. E from C, so this means if I go back to the drawing, where is point C? Point C is where the engineer is standing. So the angle of, um, the angle of, um, what's this, the angle of, oh, he's just measuring an angle from point C to point E, and that angle here happens to be our first angle, which is theta, so our theta lies here. And then we're also told that um, the angle from, uh, of, um, the angle that he measures of E from D now, we are now looking at D, from D is going to be alpha. So where is D? D is right there at the top. But then we don't have um, a horizontal plane, so I'm going to basically introduce a straight line there that will help us to be able to make sense of what the whole thing is all about so that we can also be able to fit our next angle, which is alpha, so alpha is basically there. Remember that these angles that we measure or the angles of elevation, which is what the question was supposed to be. The wording here is a little bit confusing, but it was supposed to say the angle of elevation of D to E is alpha, and that is what we are picking up from that statement. Right, Cliff, DA is Y meters long, so there's our Y there, and we are also told that um, we've got X there, which is the distance between point B and point C, uh, which is at the foot of the cliff BE. We are required to show that the telephone cable is equal to X tan theta minus Y over sine alpha. So basically, the question is asking us to find the length of the green line that you're currently looking at. We want to know how long is that line DE. Great question. Now, for you to be able to work out the value of that, remember what we said, you have to have at least two, three things in a triangle for you to be able to do anything. So this triangle that we're looking at now, that has got a green line, the triangle at the top where the cable is currently lying, has got only two things. The line I just drew, the white line, okay, we can introduce a point here, let's call it point T, uh, such that it is perpendicular to the side EB. Now we suddenly have two things, we have 90 degrees, and we have alpha, and that is not enough information. So we need to find more information that will assist us to be able to find the length of the cable. And by, look at, uh, by the look of things, I feel like it's going to be much more important if we try to work out the length of ET. Now, if you focus on the triangle that we have, the right angle triangle, this one right here, this one, that has got a lot of information. There's a few things that we can do there. There's C, there's point B here, and we've got point E right at the top. Now, according to what we have here, if you go back to the big drawing, if it's Y on the left-hand side, you, it looks like we have got um, a square, a rectangle, in fact, a rectangle A, D, T, B. The side on the left-hand side is Y, so if it's Y on the left-hand side, it definitely means on the right-hand side, the length of B, T is also going to be Y unit. So in that triangle, I can be able to work out the length of um, the long side, which means this one, the side E, B, the one that we're currently looking at right now, if I want to work out that, we can use the relevant trigonometric ratio to relate x and this side here, which is currently, if you remember this point t here, the whole side is now going to be y plus this small distance here, which is et. So tan of theta is equals to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. If we do cross multiplication, our eb comes out as x multiplied by the tan of theta. Right, now once you have done that, you will notice that we are looking at EB and according to the drawing, EB is a combination of two things. The first part is ET, which is this small piece here, and the second part is Y, which is the one we are looking at here. So for my EB, I'm gonna rewrite EB as ET plus Y equals to X tan of theta, which simply gives us ET as x tan of theta minus y. Right, now once you have done that, you have et now, it means if you go back to the triangle, the green, the triangle with the cable now, which currently looks like this, we have the cable that must be measured, we know the length of um, et from point c to point e, we have worked that out as x tan of theta minus y, we also know that the angle here is angle um, alpha, which is the angle at point D, we can now simply apply our um, trig ratios to try and figure out the green line. And this is simply going to be the ratio that will relate the opposite side with the hypotenuse side. So the ratio that will always help you to figure out the relationship between the opposite side and the hypotenuse side 
If I want to make it opposite and hypotenuse, I will need to use sine. So simply, this is going to be the sine of alpha is equals to the opposite side, which is ET, divided by the hypotenuse, which is DE. If you cross multiply here, DE will come out as um, ET divided by the sine of alpha. Now, what is our ET? There's our ET right there. So we're going to take it and just sub it there. Let's see what will happen. Something very interesting is going to emerge here. The length of ET is x tan of theta minus y divided by the sine of alpha. And that is the length of the cable, which is exactly what the question was asking us to prove, that the cable is x tan theta minus y over the sine alpha. Is that what we have? Yes, that's exactly what we have. x tan theta minus y divided by sine alpha. Now, this is a very, very good question. It's quite involved. The wording that was used in this question was a little bit confusing. The important thing you need to keep in mind all the time is whenever you're talking about the angle of elevation, it must start somewhere going up, and it must be with reference to the horizontal line. It must always be with reference to the horizontal line. Now, thank you very much for that question. It was really a great question. I hope we learned a lot from that. Thank you, and keep those questions coming.